Hello again. Even if you mean absolutely no harm, Halloween costumes can indeed be hurtful to some communities and fall into the category of cultural appropriation. What do we mean by that? Appropriation is just one of the themes of the book, So You Want to Talk About Race, which just this week won a 2019 Washington State Book Award and is out in paperback. Author Ijeoma Aluo joins me now. Welcome back. Thanks for having um, me. As I told you when this book first came out, I think it's a generous book because it's one of these places that we can go to learn without pestering our friends and our coworkers and become more aware. And so Halloween has been kind of one of these times, and we've seen this in politics as well, where we talk about cultural appropriation. What does that mean, and how can the rest of us sort of understand mm -hmm. what, what, what is felt when we overstep? Yeah, certainly. So cultural appropriation is one of the trickier issues that we deal with when talking about race in America. But really, it's talking about how a culture that is in power or more privileged adopts or exploits a culture that is less privileged or has less power for its own entertainment or financial gain. Mm -hmm. And so when we see this around Halloween, oftentimes it's people dressing up um, predominantly white people, white children, dressing up in costume as a different culture and treating a culture like a costume. But we really see cultural appropriation just about anywhere. The main problem is, is that oftentimes these cultural artifacts are important, if not sacred, mm -hmm. to the culture that are, is right. being taken from. Oftentimes the traits that are being adopted are things that people from that culture are often ridiculed for or have had to fight to protect or have had stolen from them. And so it's really complex, but it's really about power and it's about use of power and showing respect for a culture that has been th you know, fighting to protect itself yeah. and its cultural artifacts against a system that honestly doesn't want it to profit or be proud or be able to display you know, its art and culture and history and religion it proudly. And you know, so it's, it's really about being aware of the amount of power you have relative to the culture that you're trying to engage with or borrow from or take right, from. Right. And when we use these costumes as something to put on and take off, that's not the experience of the, the person that we're imitating at that point. The, the other people don't have that opportunity. And so we need to be aware of that as white people. Yeah, and I think it's important to recognize that this is all in context of American and Western society, culture, pop culture. So a lot of times people who want to dress their kids up or whose kids want to dress up as Pocahontas, mm -hmm. right? We, right now we look at the fact that indigenous native women are missing and murdered at alarming rates across this country. Nobody talks about it. Pocahontas. Talked about it on this show. I just want to point it out because I, you know. We're listening. We're trying yes. to listen. <laughs> but, you know, there's families trying to figure yeah. out what happened to their daughters, sure. their wives, their sisters. Uh, Pocahontas herself was a child who was basically a victim of sexual assault and mm -hmm. kidnapping. And to have someone say, this is a good costume I'm going to dress my child up as, especially when you're part of the culture that is responsible for this exploitation, is really painful. And it reduces yeah. Native and Indigenous people to this caricature and stereotype in a way that's really hurtful. And I think when we think about it that way, we don't want to do this. So I'm hopeful that your explanation can reach the right ears. There is a term called blackfishing that has been in the news lately. Can you explain to me what this means? So blackfishing, as I see it oftentimes on social media, um, it's people pretending to be black <laughs> in various spaces, whether it's oftentimes even p taking a photo off of Google images of a black person mm -hmm. and using it, or just adopting and appropriating black speech um, in conversation. And oftentimes for me, it's very obvious to spot. Someone will show up using sling that almost sounds like they're from a black exploitation film, <laughs> trying to throw me <laughs> off. <laughs> and I'm sorry, Charlotte shouldn't <laughs> laugh, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, and I'm like, you aren't a mm, real person. Yeah. And the intent is oftentimes to divide and to anger, um, to mock people of color and black people in particular. Um, but sometimes too, it's just people try th saying, you know, I went in on this cool thing without any real appreciation. If you can't tell what even is authentic speech because you don't spend a lot of time with black people, mm. then really what you're doing is, is exploiting and mocking. All right. So at 
talk to me about, and just real talk here, there are lots of people who want to be an ally, who want to figure out what to do. Um, and they're not quite sure because they don't want to be wrong-footed, they don't want to do the wrong thing. And that seems equally you know, difficult because we need all the good-hearted people we can get to be doing the right things. How can we be allies? You know, a lot of what we're talking about today, everything we've talked about today is about power. And so I try to tell people who want to be allies, and particularly white people who want to be allies in racial justice, to look at your own personal power. You mm -hmm. may not seem like you have power, but you do, because we're talking about systems. Things like cultural appropriation are a problem because of power imbalances. So look at where you spend your money. Can you give your money to black businesses, businesses of color? Are you asking your representatives about issues like police brutality, housing affordability, school reform? You know, where are you in the PTA? Are you talking mm -hmm. to your school board? Um, are you supporting films and the arts of artists of color? All of these issues really matter. And are you in a work meeting talking about access, talking about true right. diversity and equity? All of these issues where you have access, where you're in a room that someone else may not be in and you can speak up, take that opportunity. Because if you don't, who will? The book has been, um, it's obviously a New York Times bestseller. It's been very well received. How are you feeling about the nature of the conversation around race right now? You know, I think it's really difficult still, and that's part of why I wrote the book. It's shocking sometimes that 400 years into this system, uh, we are still having difficulty talking about things. But I am seeing people trying. I am seeing people reach out. And I think that's why the book has been received as well as it has, and why books by other writers of color who are writing similar yeah. topics are. All we, have to, all we can do is try. This was a man-made system. Racism in America is a man-made problem. And it will have man-made solutions. We just have to keep communicating with the goal of undoing that harm. Thank you so much for Thank being you. with us today. Really appreciate it. Can't recommend the book highly enough. Um, up next, well, we're going to go less serious. We're going to whip up some cookies with creative designs with the Hutch Heaven. We'll be back after this.